so the issue with this is a shop vac and a set of lights were plugged into it with a splitter and the shop vac turned on Okay, so this is only rated for 10 amps. So you can see somewhere in the middle there, right around right here, it is rated for 10 amps output. And turning on the shop back caused that to burn out. So what we're gonna do is open it, find the fuse that is in there, that caused it to burn out, that, that popped, and either bypass it or replace it. Let me get a power bar of some sort, and we can plug this in and see what happens. Let me find a power brick. Okay, so I got my power brick here. Okay, the blue light indicates that it's plugged in. We can plug in this battery charger, and we can see down here the lights light up when we turn it off. The lights go out. So it is working. Let's plug, let's plug this guy in, same port. There is a light. Let's see if this works. Okay, so the red light does come on, um, but switching it between red and blue does not change the output of this. And we can use our multimeter. Let me grab that. Okay, got the multimeter. So we're set to AC. We can check a live port here, 121.6 volts. Let's check one of these ones. 1.7 volts. Now let's push the power button. 69 volts. So to me, that says only one phase is getting through, so only one leg of the AC. So 69, let's see what this one is. This is getting zero voltage, well, something. So each leg of these has a 10 amp fuse on them, on each uh, negative and positive. Each one has a 10 amp fuse and only one side is working. So let's turn that off. We'll take it apart and we'll take a look at it inside. Okay, so I've been uh, working a little bit away at this uh, casing. It has finally come free. I just used a, a razor blade to get inside of here. And now if you push on this back side here, the top comes off and we get our PCB internals. So let's uh, push this out. Look at that. Let's push these out. It's a little Wi-Fi card there. Couple, few capacitors. Uh, and this is a um, relay, low power to high power relay. That's what the small amount of power gets flicked on uh, to activate the actual plug ports uh, with the Wi Fi. Switch it relay. Here's our button on the side. Okay, so I think um, we've got two fuses here, I see. Let me get my. 
the multimeter again. Okay, so a fuse here and a fuse here. We'll use the multimeter to test both of those. Okay, so I just have it, we can set it to continuity. Take a look at the first fuse here. Okay, so that seems to be working. We can check the resistance of this. Should be pretty close to zero, like maybe one ohm or something. Okay, so 0.7 ohms. Okay, let's check the next one. Okay, so if you can see that the resistance on this fuse, which we should be close to zero, is up at 11.4 mega ohms. So that's not letting much through. Okay, let's check the continuity. Uh, I doubt it all. So it doesn't even register. Uh, continuity. The resistance is so high. So what we'll do is we will we'll focus in on this. Uh, I'm just gonna use some solder and bridge that fuse with a little bit of solder. And that should fix the issue. It's not gonna be fused anymore, but I don't really care. This one is just a, an extension cord dummy to turn on and off some stuff when I need it. So I've just got my rig here. If you want to see the review on this Kodo Third Hands uh, for soldering, I have a video up on that. Pretty cheap, pretty good. So that we can solder this guy down. Okay, now that we've got that sorted out, I'm just gonna plug in my soldering iron here. We'll get a little bit of flux on there. That should be good enough. We'll wait for this to heat up and then we'll be back. Okay. I think my soldering iron's hot enough now. This is the uh, cheapy. Don't do this very often. So we've got a little one millimeter line of solder. I'll just heat this up and we will Put a little bead of solder across there. Okay, I think that'll do it. For one side. We'll get this on the other side here. It's not going to be pretty. should work. Okay, so I've soldered from this side to this side. 
with quite the size of blob of solder. Let's see if we can make this a little bit smaller. Go get the wick. I'm just gonna use a little piece of uh, solder wick to soak a little bit of this up. It's a little bit close here, so. We don't need this much. So it looks much better. Let's see if we can shine this up a little bit. Okay, so that should work great. And then we can test it with the multimeter. Okay, so let's take a look with our multimeter from side to side. The resistance is 0.8, which is pretty close to the resistance of the other side here, this other fuse. So this should now work. Let's test it out. Okay, so we'll just put this back together. Goes together just like that. And I will epoxy this back down. Okay, so we have our blue light has come on. We're plugged in. We've got our light. Okay, red light. Blue light is off. Red light is on. So previously when we plugged this in with red light, these green lights wouldn't come on. So let's... Oh, I think... Still not. We should probably fix that. I will fix that. So I'll epoxy that down when we're complete. Okay, so when it's powered up, it turns on these green lights to charge. No green light. We'll push the power button on the side. We got green lights. So our fuse bypass worked excellently. Let's check the app. Okay, so here's the app. It's working. And that's it for fixing this plug. I'm gonna epoxy down this uh, lid and let it dry. I'll mark it with a I guess I'll mark it somehow to indicate that this is the one that has a fuse blown. Maybe I'll order another fuse. I don't know if it'd be worth ordering a single fuse. You can probably get a pack of like 20 of these for a couple bucks, maybe $20 or something like that, but I won't need them all. 
Is it just gonna be a waste of twenty dollars because this thing was only twelve dollars? So might not justify, you know, an order of that. So that's the smart home plug fixed. Thanks for watching.